Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your May the 14th Spiritual Principle Day in a Meditation. So doing it is one thing. Getting it posted to you guys is another. So I'm going to walk this through and make sure that it's posted for you today as well. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Let's go ahead and get into the meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. The title of the meditation, Autonomy and the Ties that Bind. Autonomy offers us the freedom to try new things. And we demonstrate courage when we make new efforts to better carry our message. That comes from the Guiding Principles book, Tradition 4, Four Groups. When Tradition 4 says that each group should be autonomous, it opens the gate for creative expressions of our primary purpose. What comes next, except in matters affecting other groups or NA as a whole, defines the path beyond that gate. The other, excuse me, the other 11 traditions and our spiritual principles guide us along that path. They offer direction to ensure the best possible conditions for our journey and mark potential trouble to keep us from wandering off a cliff. We don't just do as we please. We do what's right as one member puts it. At our business meetings, my home group considers two questions. How do our actions carry the message? And what else can we do to improve the atmosphere of recovery? Keeping our primary purpose foremost in mind has a clarifying effect. It ensures that each innovation is motivated by our desire to carry the message more effectively. Changes in society, in the neighborhood, or in the law can impact our meetings and often call us to innovate. We do our best to let go of that. This is the way we've always done it, mindset which can undermine the courage we need to exercise group autonomy. It may be helpful to distinguish between the capital T traditions that guide all our efforts in NA and the small T traditions, local customs or norms that sometimes feel as important. Longtime members assure us that we won't break this thing by thinking a bit outside the box. We're reminded to strive for unity, not uniformity, and to evaluate proposed changes with our hearts open and the guidance of all 12 traditions in mind. We can practice our autonomy and pay attention to the ties that bind. When we do, we find that, as promised, all will be well. I will appreciate both the freedom that group autonomy offers and the continuity that our guiding principles provide. Yeah, we're going to need a moment of silence for that one. <laughs> Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please, and thank you. Big traditions, big T traditions, and small T traditions, local, local customs and norms. And then the capital T traditions, 
that guide all our efforts in NA. In other words, what we find in the literature is being a part of what we believe should be the very basics of how we operate as a group and as NA as a whole, as a fellowship. Both are good. Both are good. Both should be considered. This meditation is indicating that when we're talking about autonomy for the group, right? That sometimes groups can run away with that autonomy, not realizing that what they're doing may affect other groups or NA as a whole. Two groups in the same city with events planned on the same Saturday, the same week. I wouldn't even say the same week because groups sometimes meet on various days. However, it may affect the other group. And I have, you know, the mindset that there should be a uh, a spirit of unity, the first tradition. And that these are things that should be weighed out. So um, hopefully the event calendar is being used where people are able to go and see what's being planned because it's hard to know if you live in an area that has, I don't know, uh, I think one meeting in London or one area in London, uh, they have well over a hundred meetings in a week. It'd be very complicated to make sure that every group honored every other group's events and stuff like that. I don't think that would be very realistic. It could be possible, but probably not realistic. Um, so depending on where you're at, how small is the area, your city, where these groups are and whether or not you have the ability to have autonomy that's not going to affect other groups or NA as a whole, or it will. Sometimes it just depends on the size of the area. So every decision we make, every decision we make, and as one member says here, there's two questions that their group always considers. Two questions. How do our actions carry the message? And is what they're planning to do going to improve the atmosphere of recovery? I think those are wonderful questions. And maybe you can bring them to your next group business meeting as being um, a guiding, you know, principle or concern as to whether or not your group deter determines to do this or to do that, right? Um, when I think about anything to do with groups and area, I, I just see arguments, right? But that has a lot to do with where, where I come from. It doesn't have a lot to do with where everyone comes from and what everyone might perceive. Do I think that small T traditions, local customs or norms are important? I think they are. And I think that they provide the construct for which our NA groups actually operate. There's some things on the north side of town where my second home group, yeah, I'm gonna say, no, my first home group actually is that will never change around holiday season. I don't ever expect the potluck, the marathon meeting on holidays to ever stop. I don't ever expect that to change. And I don't see how that group having that custom that small T tradition is affecting any other group. I don't. Because typically people like to spend time 
with their family members. However, in recovery, what we find is that our family members sometimes are not healthy for us in terms of staying clean. Now, let's go to Italy. Same concept, national holiday, right? Same concept, national holiday. And a culture maybe that is given to at least drinking wine, right? For everybody. And how how would that work for a person in recovery? How would, if you were raised, basically being able to have special occasions, have wine, how would that work for that person? And so that individual would have to determine, hmm, yeah, I don't, I'll put in a show. I might show up, but I'm not staying. I'm getting ready to go hang out with the group, right? The fellowship. And so I just can see how, you know, sometimes small T traditions are important, but Sometimes they have to be overridden by our own sense of recovery and dedication. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you will have a beautiful day on purpose. I intend to. I'm intending to spend some time organizing closets and getting winter clothes out the way, maybe even put the pool back up. I'm going to do some beautiful things for my family and myself today. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Have a beautiful day on purpose.